We'll take Jake. First question, third row on the left. Hey, Ty. Jake Fisher with Yahoo Sports. You referred to Buddy as your brother last night, and he's one of the teammates especially trying to win for to get to the playoffs. He said earlier you guys shared a plane ride after your trade here. What do you remember about that moment together, and how nice is it or special has it been to particularly bond with him as you guys have grown to this point? Uh, yeah. It, that's funny. That flight, yeah, it was me, Buddy, and Tristan. We got traded together. And um, I was, I was like, distraught on that plane ride because I was still, like, in shock and pissed and all that stuff. And so, like, while I was basically just sitting there scrolling on my phone, my head down, I just had to listen to Tristan and Buddy tell me how bad the Kings messed up the whole time. And I was like, can you guys just shut up? Like, I just want to, you know, get there. Um, but, no, I, th I think our relationship is very, really funny because when I first came into the league, like my rookie year, I could not stand Buddy. Uh, off the court, we loved each other, but I hated playing with him. Um, and then we just our, we grew closer and uh, got to know each other more, understood each other more on the floor, and that's grown our relationship a lot. And, um, you know, to, to still be with him and be teammates, he's the only guy I've been with since I walked in the NBA. And um, our, re our relationship is really special, and I think everybody can see that. And, um, yeah, it's important for me to, 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 to win games with him and, um, yeah, get to the playoffs. He's never been to the playoffs. I've never been to the playoffs. So it's important for both of us to do that. Dan, standing back left. Tyrese, Dan Wakey with the LA Times. Um, you bonded with Austin Reeves this summer in Team USA. Um, what was it about him that drew you to him and vice versa? And how fun do you think it will be to be on this stage and – match up with him at times throughout the game. Yeah, that's my boy. I love AR. Um, we compete against each other in college. I couldn't stand him in college. Um, but we got to be with each other at USA and grew a really good relationship. And, um, you know, we've texted back and forth throughout the year, showing each other love. And um, just a guy I really rock with as a person and as a player. Uh, I think he's got a lot of game and um, gets a lot of love from, from the media and uh, the basketball world for a good reason. So I'm excited to compete against him and um, excited to compete against the Lakers in general. Back row over here. Hey, Therese. Sergio Andres, Drafteados, Spain. Uh, I've read that you and that you were a big fan of LeBron James growing up, obviously. Uh, can you talk about how special it is for you to play against him tomorrow in a matchup like that? And also, uh, you've been in Boston, Milwaukee, now the Lakers with LeBron. Does he feel kind of the, the final monster of a video game or something? Like, <laughs> he's just standing there at the final end. <laughs> oh, you say he's like the final boss? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I think the first part of your question, like... Like any kid born in 2000, LeBron was my favorite player growing up. You know what I mean? Um, and it's it's hard it's hard for him not to be for, for a lot of us. And so, I, you know, growing up, I was a Cavs fan, then a Heat fan, then a Cavs fan again, then a Lakers fan before I got drafted. You know, it's just how, how it went. And so to, to be able to compete against him in the championship is uh, kind of like a story sto storybook a little bit, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but that's the great part about being in the NBA is getting to compete against, you know, your idols on a, on a nightly basis. So I, I really look forward to that. And then as far as the second part of your question, I just think um, – for us, we're not supposed to be here, and nobody expected us to be here. We've been probably looked at to lose the majority of our tournament games. The Philly game, we weren't supposed to win. Uh, uh, Boston game, we definitely weren't supposed to win. Milwaukee, we definitely weren't supposed to win. So um, that's just been part of the, the 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 storybook of this, and it's been a lot of fun. And uh, but it's not done yet. You know, we got to be prepared to go tomorrow and approach that game the right way. Vinny, last row in the back. Hey, Cyrus. Um. Rick, before you came up, he compared you favorably to Steve Nash, not just in terms of game, but in terms of temperament and the way that you approach your teammates. Uh, ha have you, have you, do you know enough about Steve Nash as a player to see maybe the parallels between you two as far as career roles and just generally how do you speak to your approach with your teammates and bonding with them? Yeah, I think by the time I really started to pay attention to the NBA, uh, Steve was, you know, past his M MVP years. Um, but I'm, at the end of the day, I think I'm a basketball historian, so I've watched enough to understand who he was. And I think the game has obviously changed a ton. Um, I think he does some things that, you know, I, I, I couldn't do. I think I do some things that he, he probably couldn't do. Um, but I, I, I appreciate the comparison. Anytime you're compared to one of the all-time greats and an MVP uh, means the world. But, um, yeah, I understand why people see the comparisons because uh, we pass the ball really well and, um, both of our teams play at a very, very fast pace. So um, I understand the comparisons, and anytime you're compared, it's really cool. Joe, right here. 
LeBron has been the NBA standard bearer for a long time, and may maybe he still is. Rick said that he's still in his prime, which is I interesting. But um, do you do you have any idea who's next? Who who's the the guy that's going to take that spot from LeBron? And is it something that all star players strive for? Is it is it a goal? Well, I, I mean, I think at the end of the day, like um, he, I mean, he is the the gold standard of of basketball players. Everybody obviously strives to be that. And uh, as far as like whose job it is to 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 take the reins from him, I don't really know if that's up for us to decide. That's like a media thing, to be honest with you. I think that as players, guys are just going out there and doing what they're doing. I think we're at really like the peak of our of our sport right now. We got some of the greatest players ever still in our league today. And uh, there are things being done on a nightly basis that have never been done before. Um, so I think guys are, guys are, you know, prepared for whenever that time is. I don't, Lord, only Lord knows when he's going to slow down, you know, but um, I think the league is in really good hands for when that time does come. And, um, you know, whoever the face of the league, that's, that's not up for us, uh, up for us guys to decide. Jordan. Hey, Tyrese. Um, you know, just watching you play, I go back to the workout that I went to with you and Drew Hanlon. You being able to play with your dribble, using your hesitation. Um, why do you feel like people can't get to that move? Because you use it on Brooke. You get to the paint all the time with that. Then also, with your shooting form, you guys do a lot of rapid fire where you get your shot off super fast in those workouts. Did people try to tweak your, your shot? And, you know, even with your percentages that they are, it's so efficient. And... Um, do you feel like just telling players you don't have to have the most perfect form to be able to shoot the ball at a efficient clip and get your shot off fast too as well? Yeah, I think um, – damn, what was the first part of your question? I'm sorry. The first part was uh, the hesitation. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. Yeah. With the my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah. Uh, I think at the end of the day, like, the reason it works so well is because I have the ability to shoot, you know, and um, just playing with a good pace, I feel like a hesitation kind of can really dictate – you know, the pace that you play at, you know, if I'm, you know, I can slow down, speed up, and I feel like a change of pace is what makes um, great players in, the, in in this league and just in basketball in general. And so I, I feel like my shooting ability keeps people on their on their toes, uh, you know, on their heels rather, um, to, to know if they're going to step up or, or back up or whatever the case may be. So I feel like that's just been a part of who I am. The first move I, I ever learned was Hezzy Wright. I, I swear if, if there was a world where we could – find my fourth grade clips, it would just be just nothing but Hezzy Wright, you know what I mean? And so I've been able to figure out, you know, crossovers and other things out of that and step backs and stuff like that. So um, I think that's what's what's made it hard to guard. And then in terms of, of jumper and form like that, you know, I don't really buy into all the, you know, what's a pretty jumper, what's an ugly jumper. All that stuff doesn't really matter to me because, you know, when Steph came to the league, they were, he said his jumper was unconventional as well, you know what I mean? And um, they said it about me and still say about me right now, you know, but I think as long as you put the time in, in into it and, um, you know, have trust in it and the more you can build your faith in your jumper, then the better. Um, and, and I think that it's it's so overblown. It used to make me so mad, like during the draft when people were like, people are just going to block his jumper. Well, I, this isn't a video game. Like, I don't just press square and do just block it in my face. You know, like I understand I got to create separation and figure it out to get the jumper off. You know what I mean? So, um I think you just have to, you know, figure out, and, and it's ultimate. It's what works for you. Like every player in the league, like people see what Luca does on a nightly basis. Like, oh, he he's too slow. Like that's that's just that's dumb. You know what I mean? I think there's many things like that that go on with guys where this isn't gonna work, that's not gonna work. But you can't. There's no way to like quantify or or be able to understand like a guy's IQ and 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 the the work that they put in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we're in the middle. Uh, Ty Tyrese, a, a lot of folks have looked at this season. You guys have been great so far, but they've said it's only been 25, 25 games or so. W what, are the, what have been the keys to this sustainability for you, uh, specifically that assist to turnover ratio? And then what are, what are going to be the keys, especially as you guys progress, hopefully get into the playoffs and all that moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, it has only been whatever, how many, 25 games or whatever. Um, so, I mean, it, it's, I got, I'm understanding that as well. It's not like I'm over here say, saying anything. I still got to, you know, doing the same thing. I'm getting to the gym, uh, lifting, shooting before, after, whatever, getting body work, all, the, all those things that, that are needed to, you know, be sustainable throughout a, a season. But um, wait, wait, what was the rest of the question? I'm sorry. Ah, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think just um, just approaching it the right way. I think as a young group um, and as somebody who's never made the playoffs, I've always viewed the NBA as like looking so far ahead. Like, oh, if we can go, you know, 10 and 5 in our next 15 or whatever, like I feel like that's a naive way to look at it. And it's a young, a young view of it. Like I feel like you have to appreciate the process to get to where you're going. You know what I mean? And so it's approaching it one day at a time. So for me right now, it's, you know, today's Friday. You know, I just got done with practice. Like, I got to do this media stuff. So I got to go get some body work done and, and go to dinner and get some rest and be ready to go tomorrow. And it's my approach to that game. And I'm not worried about the road trip we got, you know, coming up. It's understanding that that's coming. But I think that you got to fall in love with the process of getting there and not worry about, you know, ultimately getting there. You got to fall in love with the process. And I feel like all the greats do that. They take it like one day at a time. And so that's just what I'm trying to do and understanding that. And ultimately, by the time we get there, I think we'll be happy with our result if we just take it one day at a time. I think just great teachers in general. I think I've just had great teachers and at every at every level and uh, mentors and just the way I was raised, all of it. Scott and Dustin, last two. Tyrese, how, how much has accountability been a big factor for this team, especially in the fourth quarter? I guess guys were getting called out. Second chance opportunities were huge, and, and you all rose to the moment last night. Yeah, I think it's been talked about in every team sport ever. Like The best teams hold each other accountable, and it's something we addressed uh, before the season started in our, in our meeting as a, as a, as a team. Um, just understand that. At the end of the day, nothing's personal, and the faster that we can address things and get over things, the better it will be for everybody. Um, and I, I think that we have a group of guys that all have great relationships. Like, you know, guy, we're always like, yo, you want to go to dinner? Oh, I'm already going to dinner with so-and-so. Or, you know, come with us. You know what I mean? And so I feel like that's helped a lot. we got a lot of young dudes who really get along, and the more that we can hold each other accountable on, you know, things and get over it, the, the, the better it'll be. And I think that's reigned true for every high-level team in, in, a, in a team sport. Dustin, last one here in the front. So I want to go back to, to what you said about the shot. I mean, obviously, you haven't changed anything from a um, form perspective. What's made it more consistent this year? What's made you, I mean, you're, you're shooting, I think, at higher volume, higher percentage around 44, 45. W what are the things that have taken a next step for you shooting-wise? The work. I mean, there ain't no secrets to it. Like, I just, I've been working. Like, um, I think that, um, you know, the people in my life, my trainer, Drew, and um, who I work with here at the Pacers, Isaac, like they've just been on top of me to, um, you know, get in the gym early, stay after, uh, make sure I'm getting getting the right, doing the right things. Like, there ain't no secret. I wish I could tell you there was a magic potion or something, but, like, I just, I'm just shooting the ball. Like, I'm just, you know, spending more time working out, uh, making things harder. Instead of going 7 for 10, it's 12 for 15. Um, you know, whatever the case may be, instead of it's 20 out of 25, it's 22, 23 out of 25. It's just, you know, there's no secret recipe to being successful in anything. It's just work harder than people. And so um, I've been able to do that, and I think that's a big thank you to the people who are around me and the ones who love me and want to see me do better. Uh, to get this one out of the way, did you? what do you guys know uh, about uh, Andrew Nemhard's status at this point? Uh, we don't know anything yet. Um, we're waiting on results of some tests. Um, he will not play tomorrow. But um, we're hopeful that he may have dodged, dodged a bullet and that uh, this may not be as long a term thing as it could have been. So, but we will know more later this afternoon. <clears throat> Vince. Hey, Rick. Um, there seems to be some maybe Steve Nash comparisons with Tyrese as far as career trajectory and style of play and how going to a new place sort of unlocked something. Do you see that? And do you have any thoughts on maybe just a new player finding a player finding success in a new place with a new style? Well, guys like Tyrese are going to be successful. Um, he'd have been successful uh, if he just stayed in Sacramento. I'm, I believe that. <clears throat> the comparisons to Nash, I do think, are accurate. Um, you know, largely because of the skill set, uh, the vision, the scoring ability, but even more than that is Ty's connectivity with people. Um, one of the things that was always so amazing to watch with Steve was um, when it, whenever he'd approach a teammate on the court to talk to him, he'd always put his hand up and you know and give him 
give him five. You know, he would he would touch his teammates. Um, and Tyrese is very similar in the way he connects, eye contact, touching, all those things. And there's a there's a real you know an understanding of his teammates because he's put the work in to those relationships. So um, yeah, those are those are I, to me um, accurate comparisons. Um, I think the the two players are are a, a bit different, but um, a lot of the qualities are the same. On your left, third row. Hi, Rick. Jake Fisher with the Iowa Sports. Along those lines, it seems like Ty has a special connection with Buddy Heald. He called him his brother yesterday and was talking about how he like particularly wants to also help win, help him, him get to the playoffs. What have you seen about their dynamic that's special from carrying over from Sacramento to here with you guys? Yeah, well, they, they have obviously have a lot of familiarity with one another. Um, <clears throat> you know, with that kind of brother thing, you know, brothers fight too. Brothers argue bicker, bicker and they go back and forth on on some stuff. But in the end, in the end, at the end of the day, there's there's a great love and appreciation, and it's not an accident that I think last year they they were the number one connection team, you know, assist to score ratio, whatever it was, and I and I know they're very high this year as well. So, um, you know, they they. They feel like I believe I can't read minds, but I believe they feel they're on this mission together, you know, to 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 try to to try to make this climb to um, you know a level where you know we're we're in the conversation for playoffs and 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 winning in the playoffs and eventually moving up from there. Joe here in the front uh, with Nemhard. Last night in the immediate aftermath of the game, you said that it may have been a hyperextension. Um, yeah, I, I really, not, I, I, wouldn't, gotcha. I wouldn't write that. I mean, I mean, there are HIPAA laws. Right, no. You, this, you could get sued. This is not a, 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 a gotcha <laughs> moment. But I'm just curious. Um, it, it sounds like after And I, and I would podium. be a witness. <laughs> yeah. No, I, no I, look, the, the hope is that that's all it is, is a, is um a mild, a mild hyperextension, but what's your question? Yeah, it's, it sounds like after you left the podium that there was a moment where it, you may have feared that it was something really serious. Yeah, I mean, you always hope it isn't, but um, yeah, I, it's the NBA and guys are going 100 miles an hour and there's there's a stanchion and there's cameramen and there's a, there's a crowd there and so, you know, um, there's there are things that that are that are obstacles to to good health, but uh, on the other on the other on the other hand, NBA athletes are among the best in the world, and these guys not only accelerate but they decelerate pretty well too. So we'll we're just hoping for the best. Jordan, um, hey coach, with um, you know you talked about Andrew being out, but you know the impact that TJ had yesterday. You know how important is he going to be for you guys? You know going to this next game, picking up 94 feet. You know, and uh, just you know, just being active on both sides of the ball, too, as well. Well, he, he's a big part of our culture, our personality, um, and how we have to play. I mean, there, there's a, there's there's a reckless competitiveness about him that is something that we need to have for this game tomorrow. And so, he's uh, obviously an important part of that. Um, an even bigger part of that now that, that Andrew will not be available tomorrow. Um, but, you know, he's been doing this for nine years, uh, coming in and, and creating chaos. And in a chaotic situation, you know, he thrives. And we, we want, you know, uh, we want speed, we want pace in the game, and we need the things that he brings. Yeah, so I, I just feel like TJ is a player that um, a lot of teams want and need. A lot of young guys, I feel like, need to kind of watch TJ. How do you feel like, you know, young guys could learn from a guy like with uh, TJ in terms of playing a role and playing it at a great level? Because, you know, you see his situation always gets extended. Teams want him on the team. Like, just people need to learn. I feel like players need to kind of more so learn from him, too, as well. There's no weapon more powerful than persistence. And he's a great example of it, undrafted, you know, just forged. Um, forged and carved out, you know, a, a path into the league. And, 
you know, he's re refused to go away. And I don't see him going away anytime soon. Tomer in the middle. Coach, this obviously just beyond this uh, NBA Cup, how have you preached, um, you know, you see so many teams nowadays just selling their assets, going for it right away for a championship if they have a chance for it. How do you preach winning and, and developing over time, but also just looking at the long term as well, not losing sight of that uh, as you try to get better and make the playoffs and become a championship team? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, um, you know, development and winning um, – are not usually synonymous with one another. And so we've had two years of, you know, really all out development. Um, when we made the trade with Sacramento, we really stripped it down, built it back up with Tyrese, Buddy, you know, Miles still on board, obviously TJ still on board, um, trying to build it with, with athletic, um, athletic players that, that have skill. And so, you know we're we're somewhere on the climb, and um, you know, that said, you know we've had uh, Jarris Walker and Ben Shepard play three G League games um, two or three nights ago in Sioux Falls. You know Walker came off his by far his best game of the year, and so the G League becomes a, a, an important part of your development. You know, when when we're doing what we're doing now, which is, you know, we're we're trying to do everything possible to win. Uh, we have young players that are playing. You know, Matherin's playing. Obviously, Halliburton's 23 years old. Um, Isaiah Jackson, and there's a whole bunch of guys that are that are that are in our rotation that are young that are learning an awful lot. So um, that's the long answer, um, and it's it's a challenge. It's a challenge um, as far as you know. Uh, taking all our assets and going for it. I mean, one of the things you have to do in our situation is keep keep your powder dry and be opportunistic at the exact right times. And so um, I believe we will do that. Sam in the back left. Hi, Rick. Um, you've always cared deeply about the league, very involved with the Coaches Association. Um, and I'm wondering your perspective on the healthiness of the talent right now. You know, the Tyree story to me, the neat part is that it's introducing him to the, the mainstream public. You know, the, the matchup with LeBron, you got old and new, uh, you know, which is pretty pretty cool. You got Giannis on the court yesterday, Zion. Just generally speaking, with an event like this that showcases the talent, you know, when you kind of read this room in 2023, having seen what you've seen, just where do you see the talent level? Well, the NBA is set up for a long time. Um, LeBron James is is in his prime still. I mean, I'm watching the guy last night, and it's just, you know, it's phenomenal. And this is a guy, someone just gave me this stat. I think uh, Mark Boyle just told me this. He He's the only player in NBA history who's been the youngest player in league history, or the youngest player in the league and the oldest player in the league, both. And that, that speaks to, you know, obviously an amazing – um, run of longevity and, in his case, greatness. I mean, he's the all-time leading scorer, um, you know, and if, there, if there's a Mount Rushmore, he's, he's one of the guys on, on, on the NBA Mount Rushmore, and that's, that's what we're up against tomorrow. We're up against him and, and, and uh, Anthony Davis and a lot of other very good players that are um, on, a, on a real uptick right now competitively. So we got our hands full, but – you know, if if you're the Indiana Pacers and uh, you know you're 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 in the process of making the climb and you want great experience, I mean, this is the kind of challenge that you that you gotta love. Coach, thank you. Miles, you guys have talked a lot about the opportunity this tournament's provided, right? You obviously beat teams like Philly, Cleveland, Milwaukee, Boston. Now I think the top four teams in the East last year in the playoffs. Now you get to face LeBron and the Lakers. You know, do you feel like, especially if you guys get this win tomorrow, do you feel like? This has really accomplished what you guys set out to do in terms of putting your guys on the map nationally and people you know, knowing what you guys are capable of doing? I think it's a step in that direction. I don't think it will be fully accomplished until you know, we get to the end goal, get into the playoffs and uh, you know, advancing there. But this is a great little precursor, uh, precursor to it. You know, guys get to see 
um, our style of play, you know, just how exciting it is just to watch us play at that. Um, but no, of course, you know, anytime you can win a championship, you know, it bodes well for, you know, your your morale, you know, your organization, I mean, the team uh, spirit overall. But, you know, you know, once you once you win that championship, we're right back, we're right back to work on Monday. You know, you got a four game road trip right after that. So, um, you know, you got to enjoy the ground. The NBA never stops. But, you know, it's a, it's a step in the right direction. Jordan here in the front. What's up, Miles? I know we talk a lot about Tyrese, but you know, yesterday I really noticed that at, at the end of every action, it ended with you in the two-man game or in a pick and roll or a pin down. Um, I don't think people honestly realize, you know, kind of the, like the key piece that you are with this team. Um, just talk uh, uh, about that. Was that the goal going into that, like having you in every action in terms of a pin down or ending with you in the pick and roll too? Yeah, I think for me personally, I've really just matured over the past couple of years. There's times where I would just kind of stand in the corner or just like stand in the dunker position. But as a five and as active as I am, I'm like I'm never I never stop moving. I mean, they're setting flare screens, I mean, they're cutting, you know, getting involved in the pick and roll. It can be a zone of man, like constantly trying to move. And um, you know, I know what my advantage is. You know, a lot of teams can't really guard me with the five. You know, a lot of teams will start will start with the five on me, then they'll start with the three on me or four on me just because of how much I move and whatnot. So I just really try to read the game and take advantage of all the little spaces. I love my mid-range game. That's where I feel like I thrive the most, just in that little pocket area. And then Tyrese does a great job of finding me there. So just getting involved in the action as much as possible. And then, yeah, when the shot clock's winding down, I mean, that's your bread and butter right there. Tyrese's no look passes because he throws a lot of them. How is it, you know, reading off of that too with the amount of no look passes it reads that he does? Do you constantly have to have movement in terms of doing that because of the way he finds players too? Yeah, I mean, it's a synergy thing. I mean, I think I've been playing with them long enough now to know like when the ball is coming and it kind of helps because it's kind of a look no look, you know what I mean? So like, I know it's coming, but like nobody else might. So um, yeah, just that kind of um, that synergy you develop with your point guard over time. Any other questions for Miles? We'll go Jake over here in the third row on two. Hey, Miles. Jake Fisher with Yahoo. Are you still playing with Legos and making Death Stars in your downtime? We talked about that a couple yes. years ago. Yes, big, big, big thing. I build Legos. I don't play with Legos. Um, but <laughs> second of all, yeah, all the time, bro. I got, I got a lot of um, – that's literally all I do in my downtime. I get back to the crib. You know, I just kind of just – it's a way for me to – I'll just take my mind off of things, you know. I'll uh, put some music on, and I might put a, put a put a show on or something like that. But at least three, four hours on my day, bro. I'm like I'm putting stuff together. I've already built 12 different projects. I mean, I've counted up everything. I've gone through 120,000 Legos just um, since the season started itself. But I mean, uh, you know, y'all see that when y'all see. It. I put that little content out there for you. On the second row on your left. Hey, Miles, you're, uh, no, don't want to make you feel old, but you're the longest tenured guy on the team. Can you just talk about what this means for, obviously, the city and for the organization? Yeah, I mean, for someone like myself who has seen his organization go through its ups and downs and, um, you know, some of those darker days, I mean, it means a lot to see us get a chance uh, just to have this opportunity at this level of things. Um, um, it, it's weird, you know, I am the older, oldest guy here, but I'm only 27 years old, right? So in terms of, like, everything, I'm still relatively young, but... That just blows us like how young our team is and how uh, inexperienced our team is at that. So I'm just so glad that guys are getting this the, the chance to like to have the exposure to this national media, have the exposure uh, to this grand stage of things uh, this early in the season, and because um, we know what our ultimate goal is. Joe, right here. Miles, what are you expecting tomorrow out of the Pacers, out of the Lakers? How much are you an anticipating this game, this one game in December? Just some of your feelings going into it. Um. Well, I'm definitely going to relish the moment. I think um, the biggest thing I'm expecting is the level of competition. You know, obviously you've seen these in-season tournament games, just how the competition is a little bit different than like a, you know, a regular game and whatnot. So just the environment, man, like just as an athlete, you know, um, you relish in the moments. Those are the ones like you dream of, right? Like the big shot, like the, the big possessions, you know, towards the end of the game and whatnot. So I'm really just looking forward to the opportunity. You know, we obviously want to win. Uh, we have a championship mindset going into it, but you know, um, so long season and whatnot. So just uh, taking the moment and, um, you know, just, I guess, just, just, you know, reeling it all in. Next question, back left. Uh, with all the things that are happening in the last weeks, uh, also winning the Celtics and the Bucks in the same week, uh, can we consider the Pacers like one of the contenders in the Eastern Conference? Yeah, I mean, I like to think so. I mean, that's obviously our mindset. Um, but until we go out there and keep winning games, I mean, um, you know, it's just all talk. You know, I'm really just, 
are really about just going out there and, you know, and standing on what you're talking about. So if we go out here and continue to win games, you know, have a, you know, a good record through the All-Star break and then build on it from there, then yeah, then obviously I feel that way. But, you know, our mindset would never change. We do feel like we're a top team in the Eastern Conference, but, you know, you can talk all you want to. It's about what you do out there on the floor. And just a quick question uh, about the casinos. Do uh, you have any favorite game to play in the casino? <laughs> yeah, I'm a numbers guy, man. I like roulette. Like, just um, that's about it. I hate blackjack. I, I get screwed over every time I play that. Um, I don't really play card games like that. Um, Everybody's been telling me to get on craps because it's the easiest thing to do is dice, but you know, I don't really just roulette there. Black 33, put it every time, I promise y'all. <laughs> Final two questions over here, and then Vinny in the back. Fourth row, fourth row. Hey, Miles. Uh, you know, from the offensive end, you guys have been one of the most dominant teams in the NBA, and I know defensively you've been trying to work on that as a team. How has the defensive intensity kind of grown through the in-season tournament? And, uh, you know, what are some things that you guys would like to improve on and keep consistent even after the tournament? Well, as far as our defense is concerned, obviously that's just the big thing that everybody wants to talk about, you know, as far as like, you know, poking holes and just our game and just uh, our approach or whatnot. Um, and rightfully so. It's the side of the floor that we had to get a lot better at. I think that um, our focus has grown so much throughout this uh, tournament. You know, I think that defense is an effort thing. You, know, you can drop all the schematics in the world. You can try to go out there and just uh, um, say we're going to do this, we're going to do this, pick and roll coverage instead. It's just it gets, it's, a, it's a mindset thing. You know, it's just down to getting stops in the day. So I've seen a lot of maturity in our focus, our focus level, whether it's a, a switching or whether it's like you know, um, you know, exploiting something on the backside. Like people are really, or people, my teammates are really like doing a great job of like picking things like that up. And those are the type of habits that you need, you know, championship habits at that that you need to try to win these games. So I'm very proud of the the, the focus level of things, and you know, and I'm looking forward to seeing it go to an even um, bigger level next game. Vinny, last question in the back. Hey, Miles. Um You've played with a lot of point guards throughout your career so far, but I'm just very curious with Tyrese. How long does it take you to develop a chemistry with a guy when he comes in, and what are some of those things that sort of expedites that process? Uh, well, I was in a unique situation. When Tyrese at first got traded here, I was um, I was hurt. Like, I didn't play, like, the rest of the season. Um, so I had a chance to sit back and just watch him. You know, um, I watched what he was doing with, you know, our – um, you know, with our backup bigs and whatnot, and the things that he, how he was able to get them, you know, 20 and 10 games. And I'm like, wow, okay, well, if I'm in that same position, I can see where I can get in this side of the floor, or I can pop, I can do this, this, and that. He's going to give me the ball. Because on last Harris, he wants to, he wants to pass more than he wants to score. You know, he knows how to get his shot off, he knows how to get to certain spots, but he wants, like, to, you know, um, um, he wants to get his teammates involved and whatnot. So it was an easy transition for me. Um, I sat back and watched a little bit. Then once I got a chance to play with him, you know, my first time last season, it was just like a, a seamless fit. So um, he makes everybody around him better. And um, yeah, he's the best point guard you know, in the East right now. So he's rolling. Last night, Tyrese was saying that he wants to win big for everyone in the locker room, but particularly you. He called you his brother. Yeah. What do you remember about your That's experience? It is. What do you remember about your experience being traded here with him, how you guys kind of got established here together, and how has it meant to kind of get to the stage with someone like him that you've kind of come up with a little bit here? Uh, it's special, man. It's fun. You know, uh, every time you get traded with somebody, you know, I've been traded in four, from New Orleans to Sacramento my rookie year, you know, uh, and I really get, didn't really connect with the guys I got traded with because they're more older than me. But uh, even though I'm more older than Tyrese now, I feel like his personality – we kind of fit together our personality wise and uh, we always friends off on and off the basketball court, always hang out, do dinners, et cetera, et cetera. And I felt at the time when he got traded, you know, he was in shock then because he was always he was he was promised a lot Sacramento. The way he's playing, his his upsides were a lot and I feel like I said, Man, this business is tricky. You never know what can happen. You know, I always tell him that I say, Yo, they say they won't trade you, but they will trade you, you know, and uh and I he understand it was really more of a business than than what it was and uh, the business side of it. And uh, we connect on the plane and uh, we just say, man, this opportunity, you left Sacramento, you had a really special point guard ahead of you, De'Aaron Fox, and uh, they got to pick one. And Sacramento is a place where they had to make a move and, and uh, they made the right move, as you can see. And uh, I said, look at Indiana's opportunity to you to like, you know, start your, start, start your own brand, stand, start, be yourself, be Tyrese and make a name for yourself. And uh, I think he's came in his own self. 
be honest with you, I didn't see it coming out. I know he's always a good player, special, but uh, as, as you watch him grow and grow, he's so smart. He's, he works his butt off each and every day, one of the hardest, hardest workers I've been around, and he's a special teammate. You know, you tell, like, the way he passes the ball, shares the ball, on off the court. He's a senior off, off, the, off the court, too, I'm starting dinners, doing function, Halloween parties, whatever. He's a team-oriented team -oriented guy, so uh, special kid, man. Uh, you, know, you don't see a lot of guys like that around, and uh, he's a brother for sure. Steve, over here on the right side. Hi, buddy. Um, players who rack up a lot of assists are dependent on their teammates to actually make the shots off their passes. Players who are so um, meticulous with the ball that they don't have turnovers, how dependent are they on their teammates to be able to get the pass that's here or save the ball that's going to go out of bounds or somehow you know, be like first baseman scooping balls out of the dirt or, or are all his passes right where they need to be? I mean, it is I, that's must make him so special. He knows how to get the ball, where the money to the guys. Uh, he does a great job of finding his teammates, and he's very deceptive. And uh, you just don't never know what he's going to do, and he's got to be ready. And uh, he's one of those guys who can throw you a grenade. He's going to give you a great shot. He's made the right play, and uh, we trust him to make the right play. And from the, past, from the past three years he's been in Indiana, he's made the right play and the right pass. You know, yes, he's not going to be perfect every night, but scheme of the NBA season, he's, he's special what he does. Front row on your left. Hey, buddy, Dan Wicke with the Los Angeles Times. Um, covering the Lakers, it feels like I hear your name every six months or so in some mm -hmm. version of a trade rumor. It, to, to, you're mentioning trades. Um, it seemed like it was going to happen in 2021 in the summer to the Lakers, and then they ended up going in a different direction. Do you? What were your memories of that? Did you? Did you? Was there a time where you thought you were going to be a Laker? Yeah, and, I was in the. I was in the Bahamas. I was by the pool having my camp. And uh, I think he's going ready to go to, some, to another island. And uh, my agent called me, and he was like, you know, he might be a Laker. And after that, I saw a tweet. You know, when what was tweeted out, you know, it's, it's kind of true. And after that, five minutes later, I see they pivot. So, uh, but that's when you, that's what happens when you're dealing with the business of this NBA. Things happen. But, uh, yeah, I heard a lot of Romans the night before. And, uh, you know, uh, no, God don't make no mistakes with what he does, you know. If it happened, it happened. But if it didn't. You know, I, I'd have been fine either way. Does this feel a little bit like a kind of serendipitous thing that, you know, here you are in this series and that's the team that you guys have to beat? No, nah, it's not about that. You know, it's, it's, yeah, we here, they won, we won, we here to face each other in the championship game. And uh, we're going to face them two times more after this home and away too. So uh, great opportunity to go out against to play against them. Lakers are the Lakers, as we all know. Uh, but we're going to come here, be humble, and uh, be ready for the game tomorrow. Dustin here in the front. Hey, buddy. What's up, Dustin? What's going on, man? Uh, Ty was obviously mentioning you know, wanting to get you in the playoffs. I guess what's this event been like, considering that you haven't been a part of something like that yet? What, what was your expectation as to what it was going to be, and and what's it been like now that you're actually here and playing? You no, know, I, ne I never played a playoff game before, but it feels like every game that was being played is playoff intensity vibes. Uh, scouting, knowing guys' tendencies, guys are more locked in, guys are more dialed in. The seriousness of the game, you know, is. You can tell that every possession matters. You know, when you miss a box out, coaches are on you. It's like you miss a box out, you know, close out, you know, rebound and all that stuff. It's a lot more intentional stuff that, that we are more focused on locking. So I'm just, you know, happy to experience that type of uh, level of play, high level of play. And uh, hopefully we can just keep on carrying it over. You know, this tournament, yes, there's a lot on the line, but it's not about the money, but it's playing, playing us playing basketball, us playing together as a team, could be here in Vegas. Having a team camaraderie, loving each on each other, and uh, get to know you guys much better, and uh, having fun on there, man. And uh, I feel like when we all having fun, good things happen. We we'll take final two over here and on the back. Yeah, but but you were one of the few guys that get, got to play in the final four. I'm just wondering what that compares to this, like emotionally. Don't talk about final four. I had a bad loss in final four. We can't talk about that. <laughs> but it was special getting there, though. <laughs> Don't talk about the final four. <laughs> and then I was wondering. Uh, what you thought about OU's hot start so far? Oh, Oklahoma is they doing. You know, I just peeped that they're ranked number 19. I think they got really guard compared to Iverson. Uh, he's special. I, I've seen you guys post about him a little bit too. So, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm always tapped in Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma's home uh, is where I was able to make a name for myself, and uh, hopefully they continue to do great. And I'm always watching. Last question on the back row, on the aisle. Hi, Robin from LAFP. How would you describe the style, a baser style of playing these days? I hear aggressive, but maybe you could develop. 
I think uh, our, our, our pace is uh, style of play is up tempo, fast. Uh, it's a read and react often, uh, read and react offense, making guys, making plays, uh, playing on a random where a team doesn't know when they're calling plays, just going there and playing and being unpredictable. And uh, I feel like when you're unpredictable on offensive end and uh, teams don't know what you're doing, it's hard to scout. So just read and react and uh, run out and play with pace. My guy, you don't give my guy an answer? All right, George. It's my boy, ahead. man. You give hold, him an answer. Hold on, we'll get the microphone. Come on, man. He raised his hands all day. <laughs> nah, um, you know, you just talked about, you know, th how this team is, you know, continuity-wise. I watched, like, you guys' first action. You guys made, like, seven passes into a, a Miles lob, yeah. you know, on the backside. Talk about that, you know, in terms of that and the spacing and then picking up 94 feet. A lot of teams don't do that. Like, right. just even have, you know, the courage to pick up Dame Lillard 94 feet. The different things that you guys bring to this table is a lot different. So you can explain that. You know, just you know, like making them uncomfortable. I feel like when you let good players play with space, they feel comfortable. You don't want them to get in the rhythm, you know. And uh, especially like as tomorrow, LeBron, he's gonna, he needs to be. They, they all, they all, all good players want to play with space, and we try to eliminate them not to play in space and uh, make it hard. No matter what we do, they, they, they're always gonna be great because they're good players. They're special. They've been doing this thing for all their lives. But uh, try to make it not easy on them and not too comfortable because. When an NBA player is comfortable, it could be a long night. So we try to eliminate that. And on the offensive end, just read and react, just making the right play and uh, being unselfish and trusting your teammates to make the other play if something comes up again. Do you feel like, um, because you said a lot of times teams don't know what you guys are doing, I've been learning a lot of sets. Sometimes yeah. I don't know what you guys are doing. Right. Y'all playing within each other. Yeah. Just um, how is how is how is that, and how do you get to that point? Is the question. Uh, a lot of practice, but then trusting the next action, and then enough that knowing was a good shot, bad shot, and then the shot what we want, and uh, knowing your role on the team and what you're able to do and what you cannot do, and uh, if it's not there, move it on, and if not, not get the ball to tie and make them make something, and if not, blur, go screen, back screen, flare screen, chest screens, whatever. Read and react and get to the next action and get to the best shot we can get to. It, Respect. Thank you, buddy. In every game that we played, um, and we stuck together, um, and we knew the end goal was to get here and be in this position, um, and we're here and we're, we're going to take care of business. Because you're an NBA champion, do you feel that your voice makes the process that's going on? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, they, sometimes when I need to say something, I, I definitely uh, say something. Um, and I, I feel like they take my my information, um, and, and it just doesn't go through one in one ear out the other. Um, and they believe what I say, and uh, when I do speak up, it, it's important. Oh, by the way, with this tournament, do you see things that you'd like to see improve or change for next year? Anything come out of Point differential? Yeah, I don't know. What the Celtics did against the Bulls, I don't, I don't know about that one. That's a little tough, but I mean, I don't know how you change it. Um, but I mean, for us, it's been great. So I can't even oh, say yeah, anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bruce, did you guys find something or feel something different last night in terms of rebounding has always been an issue, second chance opportunities, and how you guys changed the fourth quarter with, with those certain aspects yeah, that was, haven't always been there? It was just basically just some people got called out and some people didn't. Um, and no one took it personal. Um, and I mean, Zay got called out last night. He didn't get a, a, a loose ball. I don't think he, uh, I think after that, he got every loose ball. Um, that was around him. Um, so, I mean, that just speaks on the team. No one takes anything personal. Um, if you can get on 1 through 15, and that's that's uh, that's how you build a championship team. How much has the money been a motivating or in the back of your mind, whether it's 500 or you're now you're guaranteed? Yeah, 200? see, I, I think it's great. I mean, you see Oscar last night on the bench, he, <laughs> he was really excited um, <laughs> that we're going. Um, I mean, for me, obviously, like I, I, I was uh, blessed to have a, a big contract this uh, off season. Um, so I think it's more for, for the guys who are less fortunate than I am. I mean, obviously, they've paid really well, um, but it's going to uh, help them in uh, different ways. Yeah, for a guy like Oscar, that's a fourth of his salary. Yeah. So, I mean, it's great for all. He was, he was excited. We already got a bench one. He was trying to give us another one, but uh, <laughs> uh, it would be great for those guys, for sure. Aaron, take us through kind of the mindset going into this championship game, something you guys have believed in since the beginning. Um, like you said, I think, you know, we believed in it from the beginning, and a lot of people didn't expect us to be here. Um, so, you know, we're going to carry that chip on our shoulder going in tomorrow, and uh, we'll get this week. Do you feel like you guys found something there in that fourth quarter in terms of rebounding has always been an issue really for this team? Um, offensive, second chance opportunities, all that stuff. And you guys, Bruce was talking about guys getting called out and then being motivated by that. Yeah, you know, getting called, called out, holding each other accountable, um, you know, crashing. And, you know, it's just an effort thing. Playing, playing harder than them, um, playing with more effort, and 
you know, when you play a more experienced team or an older team like that, you know, you got to do the little things to be able. What's the body feel like after taking all those blows from Giannis and knowing what's to come with LeBron? No, I'm fine, man. I'm, I'm, I'm relishing the moment. It's been a lot of fun to be able to, you know, defend these high-level players. And I look forward to the challenge every night. So the challenge tomorrow, I'm looking forward to it as well. What's key for you with matching up against LeBron? Um, and I'm not going to expose all my secrets, but, you know, just make him work, make his life hard. You are in Vegas, so I want to ask you about the casinos. What, do you have a favorite game in the casino? Or you, you have oh, I'm a, I'm a craps guy. Love the craps. Love yeah. the craps. I've, I've played uh, poker for the first time in the casino two days ago. We left on top, so it was, it's been a good day so far, or a good trip so far. Do, maybe after the Saturday you can invest some money uh, in the casino? Oh, no, yeah, we'll be going back for sure. Yeah, <laughs> we might go back today. <laughs> How much consideration have you given to the, either 500,000 or you're getting 200,000? You just got paid, but at the same time also, like Bruce was talking about, like Oscar was like going nuts yeah. on the bench. This is one fourth of his salary. Yeah, yeah, you know, for, guy, uh, like, for guys like OT, um, like KB, you know, he won this for them. Um, you know, it's real, it's changing, you know, life changing money. And But for me, that's not really like the motivating factor. I really just want to win, win a basketball game and enjoy the moment and, um, you know, get a win. You said I could talk with some of the box players uh, if they consider uh, the Pacers as one of the contenders right now for the no, no, not for this title. I mean, for for the rest of the season. You think you are in that position right now? Uh, you know, I mean, we, we we beat two of the you know top teams in the East. Um, you know, so I think for us this has been a good little experience, like a little mini playoff series for us, um, and it it will help us whenever we reach the playoffs. Being in Vegas, I'm curious if you thought at all about how you guys are going to celebrate tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We got some stuff in mind, but you know, we got a job to do first. Yeah. Aaron, is it different playing in a neutral arena? It is different. Um, yeah, there's not a real like whether one team scores, one team gets a stop. There's no real uproar of the fans, you know. Um, so it's kind of like you got to create your own energy a little bit, um, rally together, stick together. But a game like tomorrow, where we're you know so close to LA, I assume it's going to be more of a home game for LA. Um, so we're ready for that. We're prepared for that, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Are you feeling the best you've ever felt, just in terms of knowing what, who you are, your role in this team, what's asked of you, and doing that every single night? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I know my role in this team. I know what I can do to help us win basketball games, and you know I think I'm doing it at a high level, and it's been a lot of fun to c continue to get better and do it. No, I don't look at those things. I just knew we weren't supposed to be here, according to these people. So. Yeah, sounds good. Sure, we're still on the dogs for tomorrow too. <laughs> you are four and a half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was curious if you had Emma. a uh, personal favorite of your own. Uh. Hmm. Let me think. Definitely a between the legs one. Uh, or maybe the one in Atlanta. Just because TJ's right there, I'm going to say that pass from TJ, the one in Atlanta in the end season tournament was definitely my best one. Uh, and in terms of uh, all, who are your, your top five all, all time favorites? Uh, Vince Carter, uh, Joe Green, for sure. Me. Uh, it got to be NBA. You want. My pops and my brother. Right, uh, Gerald Green, sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. That's a good five, right? Yeah. And a former Did you have a favorite dunk of all time outside of your own? Favorite dunk that I've done? No, outside of your own. Uh, Vince Carter jumping over dude in the USA game. Uh, who they was playing? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Is this me? Or does it add to this game a little bit for you guys being in this finals that it's the Lakers, it's LeBron, it's the team in the league? Yeah, like playing against LeBron anytime is, is a great, great experience. But we coming to win this thing, so uh, we got to come out and just do what we do best. What stands out about the difficulties they'll present you guys, there, you know, especially with their defense and their size? Uh, I mean, obviously they're a good team. We're a good team. Um, it's just who's gonna want it more. Uh, like I feel like we're young, um, we fast, 
I mean, yeah, we just got to go out there and play our basketball. You know Ty well. How have you, what do you see and what stands out about him handling this moment he's having yeah. with all the attention? And I mean, he's handling this moment very well. Obviously, uh, he's doing historic numbers right now. Um, he's going to continue doing that. That's just who he is. He wants to see other people succeed. And he's going to go out there and get his own anyway. So uh, having the amount of points and assists that he has every single game is, is crazy. Uh, with all that's happening in the last weeks, uh, do we have to consider the places like one of the contenders, not not for this title, I mean for, for, for the East Conference, for example? I mean, I'm not going to say no. Like, I feel like we're we're a really dangerous team. Um, like, we're we're in the like the building stage stages. Like everybody on our team's young. Um, obviously, Tyrese superstar, uh, Miles a superstar, um, and then everybody else played through those two guys. Like I feel like uh, we have a bunch of uh, role guys who who do a tremendous job playing around them, and they do a great job control controlling our team. And that's why we've been so successful. So after winning uh, the the Celtics and the Bucks yeah. in the same week, it's like a warning for all, all those teams. Say it again. It's like a warning for all those teams. Warning? Uh, I mean, I don't know about warning, but uh, like we played really hard in those games to to get those wins. And so um, yeah, we got that one Saturday. We got to do the same. Let me ask you about the casinos. Uh, casinos. Do you have any, any, I don't like casinos. You don't like casinos. <laughs> no. Do you have any favorite game in casinos? Say it again. Did you, you have any favorite game inside the casino? Uh, I mean, I don't have a favorite game, <laughs> but a game that I win sometimes at is war. It's like a 50-50 <laughs> chance. It's like one table in the Cosmo that has the war, war table. So uh, other than that, like craps maybe, blackjack sometimes. But yeah, war is probably the best one. It's 50-50 odds. Uh, if you win tomorrow, uh, you can see that maybe an investment on Sunday in one of the casinos with that money that you are No, not at all. I'm leaving <laughs> right after the game. <laughs> you seem to have found a home here in yeah. Indiana. Uh, and the way you play, you know, it's a bit different. You've been shooting a lot of threes yeah. here. What, what kind of comfort have you found with Coach Rick Carlisle and yeah. uh, the Pacers? I mean, since I came here, uh, everything's been amazing. Like players, coaches, front office, everybody's amazing. Um, everybody want to see uh, see us win, uh, see us succeed, um, and it's like all the players here, like nobody's selfish on our team. Everybody wants to help the next person get better, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why we've been so successful because everybody wants to see people win. So um, we go out there, we play really hard, we work really hard for each other, and, and yeah. Well, Roby, have you ever played in the NBA a tougher stretch of three games against three different teams than you guys are right now? Uh. No, I don't think so. Other than playoffs, like being in the playoffs uh, when I was in New York, but we had some really, really tough games the past three games. But uh, we're taking on the challenge, and I feel like we're ready. How much joy have you and your teammates seemingly had throughout all this, whether it's in the bench or in the locker room? I'm about to say, you see what our bench yeah. looks like. So, uh, like we've we've had a lot of joy. Um, like. We gotta get these wins first, and then celebrate after. But is is definitely is definitely a lot of excitement in the locker rooms after after these Ws. Um, just because like we're so young, uh, we're learning together, growing together, and we're just out there having fun. And you really haven't had that road stretch where you can sometimes come together and point your season. Do you feel like this could kind of be the collective that kind of gets you guys established and on the same page? Except you already are now. <laughs> nah, yeah, for sure. I feel like. I mean, I feel like that's what every game, though. Like, uh, every game we get an opportunity to learn together and grow. So, like I like I said, like y'all said, uh, these next three games or these past three games have been our toughest games, and we've learned a lot that we can play against anybody in this league. So, uh, so that confidence helps us uh, moving forward. And, yeah, hopefully we get this win Saturday for tomorrow. So would you say that this was like a blessing to attempt this game so early? Because now you got a taste of it, how it would be to be in the playoffs. And right. You still have so many games ahead of you to really fight for it. Yeah. And maybe this is like a benefit to all the other ones because you already went through that right now. And I think this could be like the piece that you're even playing more intense. Yeah, I definitely feel like uh, these in-season tournament games have more of a playoff feel. Um, like a lot of players is playing harder. Um, uh, like,
doing all the little things because you're playing for something. You're playing for the money. You're playing for the trophy. Uh, we're playing for each other out there. Um, so yeah, like I feel like these games is getting us prepared for uh, the real thing later later down the road. Are you surprised how much this has taken off as a whole? These games, with the extra intensity, the money on the line yeah. in the first year. Nah, not at all. Because at the end of the day, uh, not everybody has a hundred million dollar contract. Five hundred thousand is a lot of money for a lot of guys on the, on not only our team but other teams as well. So. I feel like most of the vets on other teams understand that, just like our vets understand it. So um, everybody goes out there and plays hard, not only for themselves, but for everybody else on their team. So.